Hey everybody, this is Roland DeRucci. This is our uh, first first podcast, first session, first recording. I have a good friend of mine on uh, on the, the the chat with us today. Uh, and and the, the theme of this podcast is really uh, trying try to have a nice dialogue, trying to be less hypocritical than most people are, uh, and, and the free, a free association dialogue and see, and see where it goes. So, uh, Frank, if you could just introduce yourself a little bit, just a little bit of background. How you doing? And, uh, great. Okay, thanks. So my name is uh, Frank Frontignano. Um, I'm an IT guy. I'm a guy who reads a lot and has a lot of opinions and... Um, Sometimes that gets me in trouble and sometimes it doesn't, but you know, it's, um, I, I'm just a guy from Jersey. That's about all. That's nice. <laughs> well, we try and keep it East coast here. I think, I think yeah. we're, 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 we've lost some of that sensible East coast. Maybe. I think, I think in a Maybe. lot of places, even though everybody wants to be East coast, I, I feel like everybody, everybody's, uh, style has moved to, to East coast faux gangster. You know, yeah. Well, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, it's got, I mean, I have no hair to slick back. But but uh, every politician from the Midwest would love to slick their hair back, you know, and uh, and, and just have the nice pinstripe suit and just yeah. adjust the tie if they could. Blame Sopranos. <laughs> That's what I always do. <laughs> so yeah, Frank, it's a pleasure talking to you. And I want to you know bring up some things and talk about things. And I think that's okay. that's that's what this is all about. Uh, just to, just to, you didn't see Dave Chappelle. I did. I did watch. Dave I have Chappelle. not seen the Dave Chappelle. Yes, I've heard a lot about it, and I heard it. It was interesting. I did watch it. I'm not you know, uh, just just even just to start on. I'm not a huge fan of his. You know, I think some of his shit is funny. Some is okay. You know, some will give me a smile, like most stand ups. I, I, I try and watch, uh, you know, as much comedy as I can. Uh, a little background: uh, Frank's brother and I were colleagues uh, at Broadway Video years ago in, in the dub floor. And uh, and I, I another friend of ours, a colleague, uh, uh, started a sketch comedy group, and and John's future wife, which was his girlfriend then, was an actress, and she became part of our comedy group. So I actually did comedy for like eight years, sketch comedy, and and that's how that's our association. So Frank and I came to, you know, we were always at our shows, and he was always there talking to me. So we had a great relationship, and that's actually one of the reasons. And it's scary to think how long ago that was. I know, I know. I was a young <laughs> buck. Yeah, my, my my son was was a baby in the, in the, in, the, in the carriage, and now he's a grown ass man, annoying the shit out of me. The beard, so, <laughs> the beard was dark then too. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. But, but I, 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 yeah. Well, I got but I think I think that's a good question since you um are in the business, or yeah. at least you know, and you have done your share of comedy over the years. Um, where do you see? I mean, look we grew up on a lot of comedy that was based yeah. on a lot of people degrading other people. Sure. Yeah. Under, under do. the, uh, yeah. I and those and, lines, you know, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, it's horrible. And, and I, I see myself <laughs> doing it. Yeah. But, uh, I, I, I don't think it, I, well, well, comedy is really rough right now. I don't, I don't really enjoy a lot of stand up. It's very hard for me to enjoy stand up right now. Uh, I, I feel every comedian to me has a character. And there's at some point uh, the character is you in reality, and I think people like George uh, George Carlin had that jump. Uh, Robin Williams had that jump. You know, these are how they this is how they were. This was always turned on, and and people connected with that character, who they were. And they were able to find their own personal voice that represented them, and they, they made a career out of it. I think Dave Chappelle is at that point. I don't know if he's as inherently funny, you know. Besides, you know, you know, in, in a lounge setting. That and a friend's social circus set, setting than they were. Uh, and I, I wasn't even a huge fan of Robin Williams towards the end either. I, I think he just got too manic and immature enough uh, to, to wear his age. I mean, I feel bad we lost him, but I, I think he had a, a, a point where there were expectations of who he should be and he couldn't get past who he was. With Dave Chappelle, I really thought it was more of a night with Dave Chappelle than the stand up. It wasn't stamped to me at all. It was really just him talking with a bunch of friends and we were able to view. Uh, and listen to that conversation, and he wanted to speak about himself in, in a way. And I, I, that he was successful. No, I, I get it. I get a lot of the stuff he said. I, you know, I smirked sometimes. I was like, really? That's a joke. I still come about twenty minutes, of, you know, away, and that's okay. That's his bit. That's his rhythm. Uh, but I do get what he what he said. And I, I mean, biggest his biggest gripe, without any spoilers, no one really listens to me. You know, and that's a common complaint. I think in, in in the U.S. and a lot of places right now, where people have these knee-jerk reactions, where where I'm, and I'm guilty of this too. I'm, I'm a I'm a headline reader. You know, I, I don't read the story; I read the headline. And if it's a good enough headline, okay, you know, and I'll get mad. And that was one of his his his, his main 
points is that people are headline readers. People aren't asking me what I think. They're just saying, hey, this guy, one person had an opinion and they get angry and that's it. And well, you know, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't even hear, you know, the setup. You didn't hear the execution. You didn't hear it land. You just hear, you know, what you want to hear. You know, and then I think I mean, a lot of people have that problem now. So oh, yeah. That. And with stand up, it's hard. I mean, I try, I try and watch a lot. I really do. Uh, you know, you got Netflix, you got Amazon. They all have these, you know, stand ups they're hosting because they're cheap. You know, they, they're done in three, four nights. They edit it really quick. It's out. You know, you paint. I mean, there's, even though they make it seem like they're big audiences, very few of them are, are big theaters. They're, they're maybe 200 person theater. Uh, and it still sounds like a lot. If you get 200 people laughing, it's great. Yeah. So they loop that audio and they, they build up the comedy. But I don't know if it's really anything. Kevin Hart, like a few years ago, wowed me. Uh, and then ego comes into play. And and that that's where I always get, you know, where, where people are like, oh, he's lost touch. Well, because he's, he's freaking loaded. Of course he's lost touch. <laughs> he's got yes people all around him. You know, and, you know, of course he's lost touch. He's got everybody who's got yes people all around him. You could have one little company with 40 people and those 40 people all say yes to you. You've lost touch. You're not. No one's criticizing you. My, no, my, my, awesome. I, I think, I guess my next question on top mm-hmm. of that is if you would think that a Rickles or a Rodney who, you know, really got on people and, yeah. you know, their insults were their, was their thing. Yeah. Would that, would that fly today? R- Rickles probably not, but even Rickles was grading towards his end also because he, he became mean old guy. I mean, that was his bit, you know, Dangerfield, yeah. I think actually was a lot more intelligent than people gave him credit for. Because he was at the same time ridiculing, uh, making fun of you or, or beating you down, but he was doing a comparison of his own, you know, faults as well. So he would he would he would be able to pivot and say, yeah, but I'm an ugly bastard. Yeah. So what am I? What do I know? And I know that's a that's a back door. But I think he was smarter about it than than, than Rickles. Rickles, I'm not I'm not sure. And I I used to. I mean, yeah, that yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen to hockey puck. He had these weird like sayings. Yeah. You know, back in the day, and, and I remember watching him on Carson and everything. And he was very aggressive, very out there. But again, I think I think it's about maturity level. That that that's one of the key things I think in this country we have the biggest problem is that that people don't know how to mature uh, in, into the next stage of their lives, and and they get stuck in, in where they think they they were their best selves, not probably where they were, but where they feel they were their their best. And, and it could be a very, you know, immature stage. It could be a, a natural stage. But the fact that you're not looking ahead and saying I can still be better is weird to me. You know, I, and I, I take that from my grandfather. I was, my grandfather was a, he was a partisan in a, in, a, in the Liberation Army in in a, in, in a, what was what became Yugoslavia. He was Albanian, but he went to military academy in Italy, uh, and, and he, he was a soldier. He, he was a soldier, and and uh, when the war ended, he didn't want to get involved. With the purges after World War II, so he became a farmer. Didn't know anything about farming. Became a farmer, and you know, raised six kids. Uh, but the man had style and grace. I mean, he went through a lot in his life. You know, he, he really went through a lot in his life. His father died young. He was the oldest son. He made sure everybody got married. He he had to take on you know nieces and nephews and make sure they got educated. But he had this 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 style about him, and I loved it. That I used to look at him. He was seventy years old, and he had this this mature grace about him, of how he spoke to you, how he sat, you know, and he, he accepted that. He didn't want to be the kid in the room with you when he was 70. He wanted to be the old guy to help you out. And when he saw the, the conversation got a little bit out of his water, he's like, you know what? I'm going to go in the other room. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you guys finish what you're talking about. This isn't a conversation for me. I yeah, think a I'm, lot of people lack that now. I, I think that um, there's a way of handling it. Um, I think that you know, people tell me I handle, you know, kids seem to like me because I treat them like, I just treat them like they are. I don't try to talk down to them or anything like that. And I I think there is something to be said about that. Um, It's, you know, it's, it's just one more thing in a long things that, you know, we're in a world that's changing and I'm not sure, you know, like, like most things, when the pendulum switches back, it gets a little wacky. Yeah. And, and I, and, and I think that, you know, our lack of, you know, look, we shouldn't be causing any other people pain. And, and, and there, there are lines that we need to, and those lines are moving every day. But um, I I just think that, you know, sometimes we, we, kind of get a little ahead of our skis sometimes and we're just kind of just 
you know, I, I, I think I think we're also a country of. I mean, it's just a cultural thing. I, I think I think we're a country of people who who set our expectations, and, and no matter what, we want to reach it. And and it's and it applies in business, it applies in life. And I, I think it's like an education thing. I, I do feel also that there's a maturity level that's lacking. That everybody wants to be a kid with a baseball cap. Everybody wants to remember how they acted when they were young, and and they don't want to embrace, you know, the the the, the journey, you know, so, so to speak. I I actually love being my my, my kids are twenty six and and uh, and twenty one, and I, I love being a dad at that point. I do I miss them as children? Yeah. Do I miss being this young guy who can you know play soccer with my son? Yeah. I, you know, I can't freaking really walk a path without breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but but I do enjoy you know this part of my life too. Yeah, I, I, really I think enjoy that. Uh, there's a well-known, or at least a thing that um, your favorite your favorite era of SNL is the era where you're actually watching as a as a as a teenager, yeah. and and I think that can really go a lot into life. I think we we've kind yeah. of all, we've kind yeah. of all gone to this phase where. Mm we we think that you know those those carefree times of our life whether how carefree they were or not are 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 the best and they should just continue on um and there's a part that's right yeah there's a part that's right but there's a part that you know you got to mature a little bit and you got to change and you got to recognize that and and you got to reckon you got to you got to look at the situ you gotta look at the cards or you gotta look at the situation you are at right now and you gotta look at yeah. the situation the planet is at right now and don't think that you know first of all it, it wasn't it probably wasn't as good as you thought it was yeah. and sec and second of all it's not coming back so right. you gotta deal you gotta deal with what you got now and you gotta deal with it the best way and I think we kind of we've kind of lost that um for a ton of reasons um and i'm sure we'll talk about them eventually but there's a ton of reasons why we've lost that fear is probably the biggest one and it it, it, that's to me that's like the gist of things right now there's a there's a lot of people who don't like the situation they're in they think the situation they used to be in was better yeah and they are going to you know they're going to put their feet down and stop it and say we're not going to we're not going to allow this to happen when they really don't have a choice. Yeah, I mean, I, I it's weird because I, I mean that, that's that's a that's a great way to look at it, and I, I also I also think it's not only you know when you're younger and 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 you think that you know that was your best time. I think it's also when when you feel you got the most positive feedback in your life, and I think that's that's also related to that. You know, be it fashion, be it. Uh, I go with my dad, you know, when he, he had a certain style of dressing, but it was literally when just when he went to away to school when he was a kid. And that's how he dressed forever. And he didn't he didn't see himself in any other way. And and it was, it was always weird to me because he never got to that maturity level of uh, let me be a grandfather. Let me act a certain way. Uh, you know, I mean, he was fine grandfather, but but he was, there was moments where it, cring, it was cringy to me a little bit. I was like, can you stop acting like. You know, you, you're you this guy, you're a granddad, be a granddad. And I think a lot of people in the, in the world now, too, and I mean, I'm just looking at U.S. culture and and just the way the world is. It's, it's, I mean, it's a common thing with all the stuff that's happening in the world right now, especially in the U.S. You know, are we going to break up? Are we going to go somewhere? Are we going to, what's the next forward, step forward? You know, I always say, I didn't want flying cars, I want sanity. You know, that's why I tell people, like, what did you want for the future of the U.S.? I didn't want flying cars. I just need to be, people to be sane. Yeah, that's what I thought we were going towards. Uh, is, uh, and I think I think people have lost that that exceptionalism, and and we're we're stuck in a place where they got. I mean, look at some of the movies, look at the TV movies and stuff like that that we're talking that we talk about, and and how they've changed. I was thinking about it recently of like cop TV shows. I'm an old guy; I'm 55 years old, so I've seen the Berettas and the Kojaks, and I used to watch uh, Maddox. And and, and and canon and I've gone through Hill Street Blues and everything and how is the TV shows how they've changed so dramatically now uh, to where you have to be a bad guy to be a good guy you have to be very narrow and troubled and beaten down to succeed and you cannot listen to any rules whereas before you know those shows were like no you got to listen to the rules. And then, no, no, no. I was thinking about it. It was really interesting how they've migrated. Like you, I can't watch a, a cop show right now. 
I just I can't. Mean, look, I, it's what, heavy what, reading, what rules? What, what, what rules did Dirty Harry fall? No, but he he's the one who broke the rule. He's the one who broke that that, that yeah. form. But if you look at Maddox, you look even even Rothfer Files, which uh, which was a great. I liked that show when I was a kid. One of the greatest shows ever. Holds made. up. Yeah, it holds up pretty well. It's kind of quirky. And it's but he's a guy who got thrown out of it, became a PI, and just really tried to help people follow the rules. Even though he was he was breaking rules, he was like trying to get back in people's good graces. That's what was frustrating with him that he was you know being an honest guy. But he was, he, it was, and he was overwhelmed sometimes. I mean, he lost a fight sometimes. He got his ass kicked sometimes. So you watch a show right now, and you see if a cop who's a lead cop, you know, uh, gets his ass kicked. Never going to happen. If not, it's a very special episode, and they almost died. But it never happens. It never happens. Right, and and it's, it's always like it. these weird sexual tensions overlaid into it. It's almost like a soap opera where everybody sleeps with everybody. But you don't really get past that. And even Dirty Harry. He was seen as a psychopath, even though he was like, yeah, he did it. But his character was psychotic. He was like so passionate about just blowing people away, you know, that it, it, it was unsettling to a lot of people. Like, OK, do you want to be this cop? You know, oh, well, we need him. But we also have at that point we had a. Uh, what was the uh, Charles Bronson thing? Uh, Death Wish. Yeah. And Death Wish came out, too. So there's this, this vigilantism that, that came about. Yeah, I, that period of American film. I, I, yeah, well, I think that you know, there's uh, it. It really all ties into uh, to these things I was talking about before. Yeah, um, there are deep cultural changes that are going on in this yeah. country. Um, things that that have taken four hundred years to get to where we are, and there, you know, and because of that. There are a lot of people who don't think, you know, don't think they got a fair break, but they really did. And yeah. they are, and, and it, and they are trying in the best way they know how to deal with it. And right now, I guess we're at anger, but I mean, it's, 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 that's kind of where we are right now. And it shows up everywhere. We, you know, we, we need our cops to be, we've, we've also mythicized certain attributes of, of a culture and, and not to take this to a, a, a weird place. You know, you, you, your, your, your ethnic background is Italian and a little bit of Albanian. If I remember uh, correctly. You know, every and time, I, every time my DNA comes up, I become more and more Albanian. So, I mean, this you, is getting, if, again, it's, if you're from I'm, the South, uh, you're Albanian. You're Albanian yeah. Like I'm, I'm getting more and more Baltic and Greek every day. The way. Yeah, the so probably, uh, well, me. If you can't, tell me the town. I'll tell you where you came from. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, and me being Albanian, but and that's, the, you'll, you'll hear it. There should be a drinking game on these podcasts. How many times I mentioned I'm, Alba I'm Albanian, but, uh, but, but I, I do feel that we have, in this country, we've taken the mythic mafia ideology, that, that culture, and, and taken it and applied it to where we can be angry. Because, you know, you, you hear everybody, anybody goes, you don't know who I am. I don't know. I don't give a fuck who you are. <laughs> you know, but, but there is that, that threat, you know, that, that, pe that underlying threat of, hey, I can do you harm. Hey, all I need is a baseball bat. And, and we've sort of fantasized about it. And it's become, and, and I mean, I, it's funny because I'll, I'll see, I'll see like all sorts of ethnicities with, with kids named Mario. And, you know, <laughs> like, like I know, I know rappers, Giovanni. I don't see any rapper, black rapper saying, my name is Juan. <laughs> you know, they're, they're all going to say Giovanni. There was some guy, some kid who got arrested right over here somewhere. And the kid's name was Luciano. Now he's a kid from the projects named Luciano. Now you can, do, you can name your kid whatever you want. But I think it's because we've mythicized. You know, Luciano was a fucking pimp. I mean, he was a pimp and a, and a bootlegger and a, and, a, yeah. and a criminal, and he killed people. And, and you wouldn't feel that nice about – and that guy started from boosting cars. That guy started from robbing things. He didn't end up, you know, with a guy with a fedora. He started robbing people, robbing his friends, his family, wherever he could rob. That was his his, his, his upbringing. And, you know, how, how, do, how did we make that into something to aspire to where you're going to even name your kid after somebody – you know, he didn't die from syphilis, but, you know, you know, Scarface did. And people, you know, gangsters are like, hey, I'm gonna, you'll call me, you know, my nickname Scarface too. The guy died from syphilis. I mean, from raping prostitutes. I mean, that, that, that was his, that was his lineage. That, that's what ended him. Uh, you Man. know. It's you, weird. You, you now, Albanians do the same thing. I'm not saying for everybody, you, but they're you, Albanians. You, con you concentrate yeah. on the organized. You don't concentrate on the crime. 
Right. Right. And and and, and, and the uh, the fancy afterwards would have got there. Yeah. yeah. But you don't realize what he's doing. And I'll tell you, gangsters are some of the hard. And it's not an easy job being a gangster because you no. have to. I know some guys who do it, and <laughs> you have to be thinking about making money all day. Maybe you're not doing heavy lifting, but you're working all day because you're always on the grift. You're always on the hustle, and that's just the way it is. You know, and a lot of guys don't make a lap that much money. It's the few they act like they do, but it's all a hustle. It's always been a hustle. It's weird. It's a, it's a weird thing. It's it. You know, you, it's very easy to romanticize. Yeah, and even even in the places like Sopranos, where yeah. I thought they did a pretty decent job of showing it's not the most romantic thing on the planet. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with um, that. Yeah. It, it 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 you know it's. We all want to be bad. Yeah. We all want to no, be dirty. They did and, a great job and, of that show. They, it did, they did show a lot of that. That it wasn't as romantic. And, and how people and, and friendship and loyalty is not the crux of that life. No. It's and that surviving. Was, no one really picked up on that. That loyalty and family was not the main point of that. I mean, that's why the show is so darn brilliant. And especially, yeah, you know. And, and it's one of those things that. I think that, and there's a lot of things like this in life, and there's a lot of situations like this in life. And we were talking about East Coast when we started. Mm -hmm. You know, you're from my neck of the woods. You're from Jersey, and you recognize ninety percent of the places that they showed, and you know, yeah. have had more yeah. and ha and had more than one beer at the Bada Bing before it was yeah. known as the Bada Bing. No, I'm, I'm Staten Island, but yeah, but yeah, I know. But yeah. yeah, I know. <laughs> Same exactly. thing. You know, it's it's you know Staten Island is like you know Jersey. We're a suburb of Jersey. I don't know why we're part yeah. of New York State. It's great, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, yeah, but I mean, you know, you knew enough people like that, or yeah. enough people who knew enough people like that who who understood. It was very easy to understand where they were coming from and what was going on, yeah. and the things. Whereas if you're somewhere in the you know in the middle of the country, or somewhere else, this is your only real mirror. Yeah. into what's going on and you can very easily you know get sucked into that yeah like i said and, romanticize is a good way which the way yeah it is it is very romantic in their minds yeah but yeah, yeah. Uh, but i mean it but uh, you know there's like i said there's a lot of there's a lot of things going on right now um yeah. that are not you know they're dangerous for lack of a better word they don't need necessarily need to be yeah. But you know, there's a there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of people who are experiencing epic changes in society. Mm -hmm. That it's not an easy thing to accept, and I understand I that. It's not I just, I mean, it's, it's a, but it's they a have weird to thing. Be, but you, you have, have to. to. No, you exactly. have to. And, and I find I find it really disheartening be, be, for, for one major reason. Uh, the bulk of the people here, you know, people don't want to, you know, people have enough freaking flags, you know, to, to fly, blanket the whole planet twice, all made from China. That, uh, but this whole country was founded on that. And then, I mean, and we can get a discussion about, you know, uh, how it was founded and all that. That doesn't matter. But the fact that people came here knowing their life was going to be changed in tremendous ways, knowing that they're going to have to accommodate something when they got there. They weren't, even though, even though it's a, uh, you know, you can bring your own food, you can make your own gravy, you can make your own sauce, you can do your own vegetables in a certain way, and that's fine. But you're going to have to accommodate the location in some way uh, to be successful. And that they, at that point, now that we've become this romanticized American view or and we can't deal with change now, I, that I don't understand because we came to change. I'm an immigrant. I'm, I'm, I'm a naturalized citizen. I, I was a, I'm, I'm a refugee. I was a refugee in the camp and we were in Italy. And then we, 10 months, and then we came to the U.S. and we were settled in New York because we had other Albanians around here. And then they settled us in an Albanian neighborhood in Brooklyn, and then we moved to a few other neighborhoods, and I ended up on Staten Island. But that's always been my, my pride in my, my background was not necessarily the uniqueness of my, my people because we all have the same myths about our own people, you know, but we're all badasses in our own circles. We all have a history of like, oh, you know, this one guy, did, he's nuts and he's crazy, but he, you know, he's got your back. But my, my pride, when, when we came here, we, we were able to hustle because we were able to adapt and change. And when I see my people, my, my ethnic group, not budging, you know, with, with these things that are going on today, not willing to change 
And I'm like, well, but you came to change. You did change. You, your family, if you didn't change, you would have remained in that freaking village without shoes and a dirt floor. And you came here and you have this beautiful house. You have these beautiful kids. You have this beautiful you know, spouse and you're moving forward and you're educated. And I don't understand why you don't read more. And I don't understand why you don't question more. And I don't understand why you don't want the change to happen. Because change is great. Change lets you step on its shoulders and move on. And, and I mean, that's me. I, that's And I get it. I get what, totally what you're saying. That people are scared. It's, it is an epic change. I, I think I think there's a, there's a few reasons why people are fighting it so much. I think there there is, I don't know if you remember this, but I know people talk about now about the assimilation, you know, it, are white people vanishing in this country and, you know, what we're going to look like in 10 years. But this happened also in the 90s. I remember Time magazine had a cover of what America will look like in 20, in the year 2000. And it was essentially a black guy, black skin black guy. And everybody freaked out. And at that point, they changed the immigration policies in this country. And they made it's, more Eastern Europeans come in. It's... um. It's part of the American experience, for lack of a better word, that that let me finish, but that you can, you know, that you you come over as a group. As a group, you are marginalized by the people who are already here. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, no Irish need apply, no Italians need apply. Mm You know, and we all in, and it's, 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 that's, you know, it's all, you know, we all group together because, you know, that's, you know, what, uh, you ever been to Brooklyn? you've been to Brooklyn a few times, right? Yes. You've been to Brooklyn? There's a yes. place uh, next to Prospect Park until the 50s, it was, it was called Guinea Town. Yeah. I mean, exactly. you know, you got like, exactly to your point, marginalized, yeah. you wouldn't believe. Yeah. We all, we all been marginalized and, yeah. and, and then you eventually fight your way through it, mainly by working hard and making money. Mm-hmm. And then you move to the suburbs, you know, yeah. and and then, you know, once you get to that place where you think you're, you know, settled or American or whatever the heck you want, and then it's your turn to to, to pick on the people, the next people that are coming. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the, you know, there was the Anglo-Saxons to the Italians and the Irish, mm-hmm. and then the Italians and the Irish all settled over here in Hudson County. And then, you know, and then the Cubans came in and they would yeah. they would give the Cubans crap and they would move out to the suburbs. And then the Cubans took over. And now the Cubans have moved out to the suburbs and they're and they're pissing on the Dominicans and the and the Ecuadorians and the Colombians. And, you know, so that's just it's an unfortunate natural part of American life. Mm-hmm. I think on top of that, I think, you know, it's a, a natural thing here in this in, in the East Coast because, you know, we have so many immigrants. Yeah. But I, I think that, you know, when you look at the rest of the country and you look at places that have been white Anglo Saxon for so long mm-hmm. and they see, you know, other, you know, other people who are want to be just as American as you are. I mean, that's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. But they don't look like you and they don't act like you. And you may not follow exactly the same rules or follow exactly the same God as you do. You know, all of a sudden, you know, well, I'm an American and you're not. And that's – it's unfortunate. Yeah. It hasn't changed. And I think we've hit a point. This is one of these points where, and this is, you know, I'm not the greatest history person, but, you know, this is one of the points where we're having a, a major revolution on the way life is. Um, you know, the, the, the data and the way the services and things that don't get made here anymore because it's too expensive mm-hmm. has put a lot of people on their back foot. And there's a lot of people who are coming in looking for their chance and they're going to, they're going to open their stores and work at the the fast food joints and do all those things that these people who have been making cars all their lives are beneath them. And I understand that. And there's, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be, there's going to be some bad blood. It's, it's out of fear. It's stupid. Um, you hope that you, you hope that you find enough leadership somewhere yeah. To to push it to push it down and and you know make this transact this transition as smooth as possible, but it you know this is the kind of thing we're going on right now, and this is why 
you know, the, the right wing of this of this country is becoming fascist, for God's sakes. I mean, they they are. No, definitely. I agree with that. You know? I mean, they a are, few years ago, I would thought it was civil war, but now I think we're going to be a fascist state uh, eventually. I fear for I, that. I, I, look, I, I, um, I go back and forth on it. I, I don't. Yeah. I, I, I think you know. There's times when I think a divorce may be coming, and mm-hmm. then there's times when I think that it's almost impossible. Mm-hmm. It's just that things are just too wound tightly. Um, you hope that somebody can stand up and just set everybody straight in a nice way. Um, I think it's leadership. Um, I think yeah. that I think it's leadership. I think that you know, there's uh, there's a bunch of people older than us. I think there's a generational thing going on, yeah. and 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 there's there's a lot of you know boomers who you know need to get out of the way nicely. Mm-hmm. And I know us, you know, us little Gen Xers are just, you know, we're just mm-hmm. the ones that make everything work. I understand that. But, um, you know, I, I think that there needs to be some leadership. I think there needs to be some compassion. And I think we need to um, relax a little bit as a, as a country. And it's not going to happen, but, you know. No, no. The, you know I, I see a lot of problems, you know, that, they're, that, that stem from, from this whole Saturn Bright now. And it, it does. You know, th- this hardens me to to a great extent. Again, you know, I, I didn't want I, I I didn't want flying cars. I just want you know I, I want us to keep going for the greater good. And we, and we we hear that line a lot. I did at least. You know how you you always you if there was the majority rule and it was for the greater good, you you didn't stamp your feet because it's for the greater good. Uh, and that that was like a theme that that was really hammered home to me as a kid growing up. You know, and I went to public school, you know, as a, as a kid, and, and it was a big mix of people, and it was a great neighborhood, and I, I, I enjoyed my, my life. Not, not because I was a kid and it was free, is that I had great conversations with people. I used to meet all kinds of people, and it was really interesting to me. I, exactly. I do think we – I also thought a few years ago that we were close to a, a civil war. I do, on the same term, same point as you, that, that we are too wound up close together. People have now uh, – reached out and connected with other parts through investments and through other things and family uh, to the country that's harder to, to have that kind of breakup. But, but there is a fear. I mean, my, my personal belief is that there's two, there's two points to the right of why they're so frantic right now is that we've got a huge influx of uh, people from Central and, and uh, South America. Uh, these people traditionally would assimilate rather than be remain uh, within their culture, if you look, especially in Texas, New Mexico, and those areas where we would get the the bulk of those people coming in, they would assimilate uh, in, into white American culture. And, and you can see three, four generations in, they're pretty. You can't tell them apart from anybody, uh, just the way they act. And and and, and white people like that. There's a common church, or or at least a close enough church that can, they can get involved with. And and in the last 20 years, the dominant culture in the U.S. has been hip hop culture and and women being Latinized. In, in, in a in a in a way, uh, from their look to their hairstyle, and, and you look at the Kardashians and everything, and they're like, yeah, they're Armenian, but they they act Spanish, they they look more Spanish, you know, and, and that's what they're and that's what they're going for. They're going for that look. They're going for the Jennifer Lopez look, uh, and 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 I think there's a fear from the from the right that all new immigrants are getting assimilated to the wrong side. Well, I, I think that oh, the, the look, the problem, and for lack of a better word. And, you know, the right is doing whatever they can to hold on to it. But right now, democracy is fundamentally skewed in the wrong direction. Yep. And this is something that I am uh, I really whine about a lot. And it's really more like, you know, it's my, definitely my Don Quixote at the, at the windmill yep. moment. But, you know, you look at the House of Representatives. And there's 435 seats in there. And you look at how many people most, and I forget, I used to have the numbers and I should have brought them with me. But there's a, you know, there's, 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 you know, how many each seat is, you know, yeah. close to a million people or something like that. Right. And then there's a state like Wyoming that has 600,000. Right. 
and it has an you know so there is an out the, the proportionality is not there right and smaller states that have mostly right you know mostly conservative people have an out you know and have a too large of an influence on on everything else now it was never set up that way that's why we had the senate the senate was right. you know two people per each state so everybody had an equal equal thing and then you know but right now i mean you look at the you look at the numbers um the last few elections and that you know you look at the total number of people who voted for democrats versus republicans in house races and the democrats mm-hmm. You know, well, they went, Demo- yeah. you know there's, there's more people voting Democrat than Republican, but there's more Republican, well, not this time, but, you know, yeah. it's it's close to 50-50 or the Republicans were in control. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a big proponent of something that's called the Wyoming rule mm-hmm. that, you know, every time you do the census and you um, start portraying seats, you take the state with the smallest number of people. And that's how many. And that's how many. That's the that's the number of people each you know each house district needs to be. Yeah. If it takes five hundred, if it takes six hundred, so be it. There's no law saying it has to be four thirty five or three right. yeah, yeah four thirty five. So I mean you know and and I think if you had that proportionality, you would see a hell of a lot of different country because look I, I people. I like that. That's you actually know, a very interesting idea. It's a very, I never heard that before, but that's super interesting, and it makes yeah, sense. Yeah, you can you can Google that. There's there's a few good things, and 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 I mean that's where to me that's the simple thing that's breaking down because yeah. you don't have the proportion of people right. Therefore, you know electoral votes. You know, oh, get rid of the electoral college. It's not the the problem isn't the electoral college. The problem is, is that the electoral college is not set up the way it needs to be set up correctly mm-hmm. to get the to, to ad, accurately represent the the people of the United States of America. And you know, so I think that you know, and right now that's you know that's the problem right now to me. And you have a and you have a right that um, understands understands that. Right. And are going to make it as tough for people to vote so that they can hold on to that majority that they have that really isn't a majority. Right. And right now we have a minority majority uh, leadership, and that's not good. It's not good. So I know I brought this up to you earlier, like we were preparing for this call and just chatting. But I, I do think if you if you look at the downfall of Yugoslavia, it's very similar to where we are today. And not not the political aspect of it, but in, in, I mean, in, in real terms, we're we're just a two party system as opposed to a one party system. It's not like we're we're so dynamic with parties that like it's no, we have all this. No, it's we're we're locked in to two parties. Yeah. It's always been two parties. Even if it changed from the, you know, federalist to whatever, you know, now it's it's just always going to be a two party system. That's just the way our minds work in the U.S. But when Yugoslavia broke, it was very much in the same pattern where where you had a majority control group. They were they were the majority controllers. Uh, they they made sure that they were the Serbians made sure they were in every every uh, every republic. They made sure they had dominant locations of republic. They made sure that everybody was communicating through them. It, 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 that's how the system worked. Uh, and then they said, well, you know, they saw things were going bad economically. They they were not uh, they were resistant to change. Uh, they couldn't cover their asses and their costs because people hadn't changed in fifty years, and it worked fine for a few years. But you have to you have to evolve. And then they just laid down the fear, hey, laying down the fear of the other, even though they were in control. They went to provinces and locations and said, no, someone's going to hurt us here. So we have to push back before they push on us. And they did a crash and burn uh, with that. And they still don't. You can talk to one of them. They'll lose their minds. If you ask them, well, didn't you guys overstep? And they will lose their shit on it. They will lose <laughs> their shit on it. And I, I only said not not because I come from that part of the world. but I did read a lot of books on it. A lot of the I was trying to understand it uh, because it did impact me, you know, me personally. And, and I know people whose families have been wiped out. I know people who got killed. I've read some amazing books on it and, and really crazy things about the politics of it and how it moved forward from outsiders as well as people within in that country. And I do see a lot of those things happening where, where people here are like, no, we got to get on the offensive because I don't want to be on the defensive. And and they're just angry. And, and we support things. We support a very 
you know, wannabe faux military culture, you know, with everything is like, I don't know if you remember in the 70s, uh, after the civil rights movement, I know in New York they did this, I'm not sure about the other states, uh, but the police department, they changed their uniforms to look less Gestapo-ish. That's where you get the lighter blues and those hues, and they changed their colors. They're not black and white cars, even though we sell them black and whites, they're blue and whites, you yes. know, and they made it a very pleasant blue. They didn't want to make it stark and aggressive. Uh, only highway patrolmen were allowed to wear leather jackets because back then the cops wore leather jackets. Yeah. So they want to get that away from that. And it's gone. Now they do dress, essentially it's midnight blue, but they're a shade off of black. Now, it's, um, it, it's weird. It comes, it's, look, I, I it, it, yeah. And, and that is, not calling them the Gestapo, but I'm saying how visual. No, but there, 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 there is a um, – there's always a back and forth. That's one of those wonderful back and forths on that and how we fight crime and how we handle yeah. – and how we handle things. And, you know, look, the, you know, the police force is at least a little more diverse now than it was back then. Oh, well, definitely is, yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and so, so that dynamic is a little different, but it's still mm-hmm. the same power dynamic. And Very it's much. still it's still the same that you know I am the authority, and yeah. and and you're not, and therefore mm-hmm. I have some sort of power over you, mm-hmm. and I understand that. Um, I know enough. I know I enough. I know. I know. I know enough mm-hmm. cops to understand that. Yeah. But you know, I you know they're they're. It's look. It's not an easy job. I understand that. No. You know, it's it's it's. You it gotta be. You gotta be. I don't. I just don't. You know, but it, it, there's that. There's well, that. I, there's I, that I, minority. I, it, it, it really. It, there's 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 some basic things. When you when you get to the root cause of things, there's some basic things, and when you have a minority overseeing a majority Mm. you have to it's always a fine line because there's going to be a point where you're going to suck up and you're going to suck off enough from the majority to the minority that the majority is going to say what they have and 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 you know and and the police happen to be the front line of that and they're supposed to uphold the law Mm -hmm. and you know that it's a it's a it's a it's a tricky line. I mean, I understand. I understand that I'm, as a police officer, I should be given a lot of leadway on how I'm doing my my job because my life is on the line here, upholding right. the law. And I understand that you know I'm going to get that leadway if something bad happens. But that mm. you know that's a you know I can't use it as a crutch. Right. And I can't and and I can't get that let that go to my head and tell me that, you know, it's and that's what happens. And because they they they're dealing with a group of people every day that um are not off. They're not well off and they're and they're criminals mm-hmm. and they're they're breaking the law. And it it's it a, you know it, there's a union. I, I have family that are they're police officers. My my brother had a great comment to me. Uh, while we're, uh, it's really interesting to me because it gave me a different kind of perspective. Uh, and he works in a busy precinct. Now, he did for many years. He worked in a very busy, he's, he's been on a job for over 20 years, but he's worked in a very busy precinct. The guy's got accommodations left and right. I, I do feel he's a good cop, you know, and, and, and not just because he's my brother, you know, objectively, I think he's a good cop. And all this stuff was happening with Black Lives Matter and everything. And he goes, and we we're driving through this nice little town in upstate New York in Westchester. Which I know most people don't consider upstate, but to me it's upstate because I left the Bronx. So, so, uh, so, uh, and he goes, look at all these signs here. And he goes, because I have no problem with Black Lives Matter. He goes, but I have a problem with somebody who's in a very isolated place, just trying to protect themselves with words. He goes, he goes, this is my life. He goes, I'm telling you how I feel about it. And he said, my services, I give a lot of services to my community that I work in. I'm out there every day helping people. Every day, they're actually getting more bang for their buck with me than, than probably the more calmer precincts. He goes, but I'm not the only service that's failed. He goes, I would oh, really yeah, like that's... them to complain to other services. Why the teachers aren't better? 
why the mayor isn't better, why the garbage collection isn't better. There's so many first services that have failed. And to only isolate the time that one time that I fail uh, is that's what bothers me because I'm really out there every day helping somebody. Oh, I've heard and, and that, that was, from. It was an interesting thing. It was an interesting. Comment. I mean, one of my one of my best friends growing up is now the chief of police in my hometown, the little right. hometown of Rochelle Park, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and we've had these discussions all the time. And his friends yeah. are always like, "Why do you even let Frank talk?" But you know, but yeah. you know, but it, it's it's but that's neither here nor there. But it, it, yeah. what it, what we're what we're talking about here, and he and he brings that up all the time. Yeah, all the time, and yeah. I understand that. Yeah, but. The teacher isn't killing anybody. No, I know. I get it. No, I get it. And get it. and but he and, says it's indicative the, of a bigger problem. And that was his. Point, yeah. No, is there is problem. a big. There, yeah. And and you know, you see, I understand, but you look, and you you see, black kids getting killed. Mm -hmm. In in ways and in in situations that they probably shouldn't be, and you don't hear about the white kids being killed like that, and and there is or if it is, it's the biggest news story in the world. Yeah, so from a I, I point th of view from a different a, point of view. Yeah, but there is a there is definitely, I think it's a reality. If you want to call it perception, I'm have no problem yeah. with that. But, you know, there is definitely uh, – I understand it. I understand yeah. it. It took me a long time to understand a lot of it. It took me a long time to understand privilege. And now I'm, you know – Yeah. I understand. I, I, no, I, no, I do get it. I, I actually get it. I I, just, I was just really speaking to, uh, like, his conversation perspective, which I, I, I didn't yeah. really think No, of. it's, it's – And, and no, the, the black man, I, I admitted it. You know, I was like, yeah, I've, I've seen that. I've seen the failings. I, I, used, to be a, I used to be a force of care social worker when I was a kid, right out of college. Uh, and, and it was hard. I had to go through the projects of Brooklyn. And, uh, and, and, he, you know, and, and it was really tough to try and get and help people. And I was helping people. I was really trying. Uh, and I felt, I felt alone. I felt frustrated. I felt threatened. I was threatened a few times uh, walking through the projects. You know, one, one person threatened to stick a dog on me because I was walking through the project. It yeah, wasn't no, else. And so, it's, it's, it Look, weird. there is definitely, there is definitely a, you know, there's larger issues at play. Yeah, exactly. And there's exactly. and there's larger solutions that are needed. Right. But exactly. But yeah. but those larger solutions need a lot of buy-in and a lot of money and a lot yeah. of things from people who really don't it's never going to be look, you can't even get a bridge up for God's sakes and everybody goes over a bridge. You know, it, 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 you know, there, these are larger problems that you that we you need Everybody to buy in, no matter what the situation, no matter what their their financial status, no matter what the situation. And there's there's a lot of reasons why that ain't going to happen. A lot of people don't like to give up their money. They think that's some sort of you know against their freedom. Yeah. People don't trust the government when you know they they fail to realize that the government is what happens when you hold up a mirror. Uh, you yeah. know, there's, there, there's, there's a lot of, there's, a, and, and that's a lack of leadership and that's a whole nother thing. We can spend another hour on that yeah. sometime. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and people, like, I remember like when the, when COVID all happened, now I'm a, I'm a small property owner, you know, just my father was actually, uh, he passed last year, but we, uh, he was a small property owner and we've been managing the properties for my mother. And I have a small property on PA just, trying to that's my retirement because i actually don't have a pension because people don't get that most of this country does not have a pension uh and i remember COVID hit and this woman i knew she got laid off and she started screaming you know i want i want to cancel rent this was the first month you know it wasn't she was actually not a minority you know she was uh, had a really good job and the business went down and she goes i cannot pay my four thousand dollar a month rent whatever it was she said, i needed to cancel and i said okay i said well so that means the landlord can not pay, shouldn't have to pay if any services performed in your area. So, so garbage pickup can cancel, heating can cancel, and taxes that bring the police department to your home can cancel. She's like, what do you mean? I go, well, well, you're not looking at the big picture of how how the government works, that that property owners and businesses pay taxes, and all these things that cover a lot of you know living, and we don't really realize how we're all intertwined with each other. I'm not saying your your rent is normal or that's what it should be. I go, but 
when you're saying, well, the government should step in when I needed to step in and cancel things because it's going to benefit me for the moment, you're not thinking about the bigger picture. I mean, were you living even within your means that you're like suffering right now like this? That, you know, and more than likely, they're not going to throw you out. I go, but I go, for you to just scream, I'm not paying because I don't want to right now. She still had a dog walker, even though she was unemployed. Yeah, I mean, it, look, this <laughs> this last year and a half has been has been an oh, it's, absolute it's a cluster, show. and and yeah. you know, I it's a problem that needs a solution. Yeah, there are a lot of people who pay a lot of rent, especially around here, probably yeah. more than they probably should. Yeah, you know, and you know, when you lose your job, and since you know, we're so much of a gig and service economy mm-hmm. that, you know, when you lose your job and you something's got to go and rent's probably one of them, but, you know, you have landlords who are just as leveraged as you are yeah. and, 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 you know, it, there's a trickle down effect and uh, you look, the bottom line is that, you know, you don't want to throw anybody on the street. No. And, and, and so, so that person who is either forced to, you know, or being, is is facing getting thrown out on the street is going to get the most sympathy. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, that's one of those problems that there has to, there has to be a solution to make everybody at least satisfied. Nobody's going to be happy, but, you know, these are the sorts of things that, in my view of a, of a country or my view, you should be able to at least work out a little bit. And yeah, you, you're not going to get everything you want. And right. yeah, you're not going to be living high on the hog like you were before. Right. And, and, you know, you, you looks like a uh, Frank got bumped. So, yeah. So, um, since we were brutally interrupted, no. uh, Damn grumbling. <laughs> what was I? What was I saying? Oh, we're talking about you know sacrifice. Yeah. And you're talking about freedom. And yeah. and you know my my final point I think for today is that um one of the things that disappoints me, mm-hmm. for lack of a better word, is that I don't understand how we've gotten to the point where freedom equates to the ability of being selfish. Yeah. yeah. And and that's and that's something that I I just don't understand. And I, I mean look, we can all be selfish. I'm the biggest selfish prick on the planet. Yeah. Don't ask anybody. Inherently but, we are. Yeah. Inherently <laughs> but, we are. But but there are things, you know, you gotta realize that you you aren't in a vacuum. You aren't, you know, freedom doesn't mean you you have you know, you're, you're, you're the master of every domain. Yeah. I mean, look, I live in a, an apartment building that's 40 something stories tall and got 10 apartments on it. You can't be like that. Yeah. You know, I understand. I have a lot of friends, you know, who live outside the Metroplex and, and, you know, they think they, you know, they have three acres. Therefore, you know, they're the master of their own domain. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, why do I have to get vaccinated? You know, well, you have to get vaccinated because we all need to get vaccinated because it's better for all of us. Right. Yeah. And sometimes you've got to, you got, you got to be, it's got to be better for all of us. And that doesn't only mean, you know, when, when, uh, you know, terrorists knock down buildings, you know, yeah. or, or anything like that. That's, it's the everyday things that, that it's all, we're, we're, we have to be at least some sort of together. I'm not saying that I, you know, you know, obviously there's, there's, you know, you, you shouldn't be told what to do all the time, mm-hmm. but we should yeah. realize that there are things collectively that we should do collectively to make everybody's lives better. Short term, that's vaccination and masking. Longer term, that's regulations on environments and things yeah. like that. And, and, you know, that's, that's, you know, look, where that middle is, that's where the negotiation goes. Right. But to say that, to, to say that one way or the other, that we, you know, that it's my way or not is, is a big problem. Yeah. No, and I think, I think it goes back to one of the points you made earlier. It's a, it's a level of maturity or the expectation of, of how mature we, we, we should be. 
uh, to like, I used to say, I used to hire people in my job. I do interviews or I had a sit down with somebody who was having a problem. I just tell them, I go, this is the deal with how you work with me. For eight hours we're together, we have to enjoy our eight hours. You can't come here angry. I can't come in angry. Just like you can't bring your work home. You shouldn't bring any problem from home in here. We have to communicate at the same level about a job that has to get done for eight hours. And I have to be able to smile and you have to be able to smile about it. The second we're angry with each other or we're pissing about like why one person is not doing something that I need to get done. They go, either you work through it so it gets done or it's probably not that important. And you have to just, get, just move on. And that was that's how I worked forever. That's how I've always worked with people from everything I do. Either, even my family relationships. I actually learned it from theater. You know, and that's that's mm-hmm. why that's like probably another topic for another day. But for me, my theater education that I started very late. uh was it helped me get through life in a lot of ways of, of, of knowing that moment of working together. It, it's um, you could tell pretty easily who's worked in a, in a real collaborative team environment yeah. and who hasn't. Yep. Um, yeah. You, you learned it from theater. I learned it from playing football for the first, right. you know, for, for, for 15 years or whatever the heck it was. Yeah. Um, and you know, it, it's, Especially a game like football, where where you have forty guys overall, but eleven guys on each side, mm-hmm. and they're not all the same. Like mm-hmm. basketball, you got tall guys, you know, quick yeah. guys, and soccer is mm-hmm. you know, but football, you got the big fat guys like me. You got you know, you got quarterbacks, you got running backs, mm-hmm. and and you have to work together as a team, and you have to mm-hmm. trust everybody that they're going to do their job. That's the biggest thing. And, yeah. And 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 you ha- and you have to while you're out there, that's what you got to do. Yeah. And and you know, there's we can talk about that's another subject you can talk about for an hour. But you know, it's it's you have to it, look. It's not easy. It's not saying it's perfect. None yeah. of us are perfect. Yeah. But that's the things you got to strive for, and those are the things that you got to find a happy relative level of frustration when they're not working <laughs> yeah no, i get that you know I, I totally get that but it it the, the goal is like you're, you're you're saying is to let the person know they can trust you and then you can both think about what you got to get done yeah you know, the if trust is being goal was that you get so much done the trust is, is the trust yeah. yeah the yeah. trust has to be inherent and the trust has to come from both of you going yep. for both of you trying to do the same thing again to the same place right and and you know, look. There's a lot of trust involved. There's a lot of there's a lot of other things. You gotta you gotta be humble enough to know that there are some people better than you mm-hmm. at certain things, mm-hmm. and and you gotta be have the trust in your management or your coach to put the people in the the best people in the best positions. Yeah. And you got to you can't be jealous of somebody else's success if you're doing your job. Right. And they're doing their and they're doing their job, and you're working together now. Right. And that person who's getting successful needs to recognize that, as much as his ego thinks it's an island, it isn't. Right. Yeah, and, I and, agree with that. Yeah, I agree. And that's and that's the same thing. And I'm sure that's the same thing in theater. I'm sure that's the same thing when you know well, theater is all about about trust and people being prepared and and knowing when you tripped, somebody was there to pick up. <laughs> And it's the same sort of thing. You're 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 perfor- you're performing in the moment, yeah. and preparation is the best way to perform in the moment. And yeah. preparation is the best way to recover for when you don't when things don't work out because things don't work out. Yeah. It happens. Yeah. yeah, whatever reason. So great stuff. All right, I think we had a good time. I had a great time actually. Thank you, thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. This is a great conversation. I really, I really appreciated the opportunity. And um, yeah. let's see, we can do it again sometime. Yeah, hopefully if you want to come back, say wrong, I want to talk to you. Watch your pal. All right. We'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, I, I, will, I will do that. <laughs> all right, Sarah. All right. All the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, much, Damien. Sir. And, uh, yeah, thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye.